I consider myself old school. Tell them that we do it for the 90s. No, not that old school. Well, not just that old school. I mean, really old school. Like, really, really old school. Like, ancient rhetoric old school. While the teachings of the ancient rhetoricians might be, well, ancient, that's not to say that they don't have specific value to our communication skills today. And today, I'm going to talk to you about one of the most important aspects of public speaking and all communication, which is credibility. Credibility has three major components, and you don't want to miss all three. I'm about to reveal a huge credibility blunder that many, many speakers are making, and it's completely sabotaging their effectiveness on stage. So stick around to watch the entire video so you can avoid this game-changing mistake in your own speeches. But first, let's go old school. Aristotle claimed in his famous work, Rhetoric, persuasion is achieved by the speaker's personal character when the speech is so spoken as to make us think them credible. We believe good people more fully and more readily than others. This leads us to the first component of credibility, which is trust. Credibility is trust. Now, does this mean that we only believe good people? Short answer, yes. There's a common saying right now, specifically in sales, that states that people only buy from people they know, like, and trust, which coincidentally happens to align with the ancient rhetorician tools of logos, logic, pathos, emotions, and ethos, credibility. We don't buy either actually purchase or buy into new ideas from people we don't trust. I want you to close your eyes and fall backwards and I'll catch you. That's going to show you what trust is all about. Ready? All right. Three, two, one second. Hello. Ah! Oh my God, a guy's on the floor. Now, this does not mean that you need to be a perfect person. We are all human beings and we all make mistakes. What it does mean is that you have to have high integrity with yourself and others in order for your message to land. If you are one person off stage and a completely different person on stage, then there's a leak in your integrity. Now, that's a topic for a completely and entirely different video, which I'm gonna make sure to link here. But even if we have an audience's trust, that doesn't automatically make us a credible source, which leads us to the next component of credibility. Credibility is expertise. Expertise refers to the extensive knowledge or skill in a particular subject or field, gained through education, experience, or training. It involves not just factual knowledge, but also the ability to apply that knowledge practically and the skill to perform those tasks proficiently. Expertise often comes from years of practice, years and years of practice, and is typically associated with one's ability to solve complex problems make informed decisions, or produce high quality work in the subject or field in question. In other words, you have to have been formally trained in the area in which you are speaking in. This is not to be confused with the final component of credibility, which is experience. Credibility is experience. Experience is just that. You have lived the work, you have been in the work, and you have learned from the work. And this is where most speakers fall flat on their face because, another drum roll, experience is not expertise. I've purchased a home before, but that doesn't make me a real estate agent. I've fixed things around my house before, but that doesn't make me a handyman. And I'll give you a bit of a more relevant example. I have navigated with a late adult ADHD diagnosis. I've been in coaching programs and therapy. I've listened to podcasts. I've read books. I've done all of the things. And I can speak about ADHD with clarity, but I cannot speak to it with expertise. It would be dishonest of me to claim that I am a neurodiverse speaker as I don't have the expertise and formal training in the topic. So I often refer to myself as the anti-motivational speaker because I tell you harsh truths and brutal realities that you really need to hear. And here's the deal. Your experience 100% matters. And of course, of course your story matters. You may have gone through something. 
You may have experienced something that is powerful and is an inspirational story that other people can and should hear. I'm not saying that you shouldn't speak that story up. What I am saying is be aware of what you are claiming to have credibility in. Whatever you went through, whatever you experienced is a good model, but it is only your experience, not tangible, credible knowledge. And here's the kicker. If you don't have credibility in your expertise, there's nothing to say that you can't go out and get it. When I grew up, I was a shy kid, really reserved, and I happened to have an experience of speaking up. Now, I made that experience my life mission through what I studied in college, through my career choices, through the ongoing trainings that I attend to be a credible expert in the areas of confidence, communication, and storytelling. So don't let that lack of expertise stop you. Your audience needs to hear your story, but they need to hear the whole story on the topic, not just your perspective. When you do that, when you live in integrity with yourself, you use your experiences as stories for others to follow, and you have the expertise behind those experiences, your audiences will always see you as credible and follow your lead. And with that, make sure you're coming off a of mute and speaking up your story. Speaking up your story with all components of credibility. Trust, expertise, and experience. Don't let just your experiences guide your message, but combine them with how you're living and how you're training yourself to speak up your story to empower and equip others. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you hit subscribe and ring that bell to be up to date on all content related to communications, confidence, and storytelling. Until next time, we'll see you soon.